Join the AFN crew as they explore the stocking of one of Victoria's prime fisheries, Lake Eildon. Then join Knight Webster and Bill Classen off Queensland's Marion Reef as they go in search of feisty dog tooth tuna. Eildon has progressed remarkably from the fishery it was 10 years ago and a lot of this progress is thanks to stockings from hatcheries such as Snops Creek. Bill Classen throws a lure around Eildon before exploring the inner workings of Snobs Creek Fish Hatchery. My mate here, Mark Ainsworth, works for Victorian Fisheries and has a lot to do with stocking of golden perch. And he had a lot to do with the million Murray cod stocking from 2010 through to 2012. And I'm surmising that what we've sounded here is a good patch of schooling golden perch. Yep, we're right on top of them, Bill. We certainly are. Yep. Got him? Got weight. Yep, it's a fish. Just a vertical jig, Billy. Well, they're straight under the boat. What a great fish, eh? He's got a bit of colour on him, too. So that's a kilo, kilo and a half of yield and yellow. Four, five years old, maybe. You can hold these yellow belly in the mouth. They don't have teeth. Don't do it with a Murray cod, but with the Goldens, it's a great way to stay away from their gill rakers and uh, let them go. So those arches, Bill, some of those are a third of the way up from the bottom in nine and a half metres. Oh, I'm on, Billy. Oh, there you go. Oh, Billy, he's got a follower. He's got a follower. Get another lure right under him. And he's peeled away. That's not a bad fish. That's quite a long and, and thin he's yellow the, belly yeah. for Eildon. Yeah. He's engulfed that, mate. But he's wanted that lure, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Right on that point where we sounded him up before. Golden has taken a purple deep diver, in this case a Predatec. He's nailed that fair and square. Nice fish, Mark. A nice fish. Not as big as some of them. No, but they're in, they're in yield and in numbers, Bill. Yeah, they are. 200,000 yellows a year is, is the typical summer stocking. And that's probably since the mid-90s or 2000s. So there's, yep. there's a couple of million Goldens in here. Yep. We'd seen those on the sounder, Bill, and 30 seconds later, whammo. It's nice when, it, when a plan comes together like that. I'm guessing another golden. It's got a bit of weight to it. It could be yeah. a nice one. Same, same lure again. Same, same lure, taking a bit of line. And out here, they can't do you much harm, so I've loosened off the drag. I haven't got a lot of colour yet, but I think it's a better fish. I think it's a better fish. Oh, it is. Followers, multiples. Look at them. Typical behaviour of fish that are paired up. It is completely, completely focused on its partner. <laughs> Bang, saw the boat, and gone. And that might be it. So I'll get this one. I'll in. grab this one for you. That one's in better nick, and that's a, a nicer fish. That's a cracker, mate. That is a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. Close to two kilos, five or six years of age, much better condition than that last one, Bill. Followed in by more than one fish, I think, initially, and then one right underneath it. I mean, it couldn't have been closer to it. Yeah. Now, obviously, they're pairing up to spawn, or trying to spawn. They can't spawn in a lake, but it doesn't mean they don't try to. So, typical, typical pair-up behaviour. And gone. Yield and Goldens, springtime. A few weeks before Christmas, and there's some of the best inland fishing going in Victoria. Although Eildon sports a fabulous golden perch fishery, the Murray Cod population in the lake has definitely flourished in recent seasons. The Million Murray Cod program, which is funded by a fishing licence fees, 
ran from 2010 to 2012 with the sole aim of stocking one million cod into Lake Yildon. Today I'm where the project began, at Snobs Creek. As hatchery manager here at Snobs Creek, or specifically native fish hatchery manager, the pressure's on because as we know, in 2010 you embarked on a million cod uh, program in Lake Yildon. Yep. There, there are quite a few projects, that the, the million Murray cod in the Yildon and the Northern Rivers program means that we, we require more Murray cod. So again, the more that we can produce here, the, the less we have to purchase in from contract. And this is where it all happens. What have we got here? We've got a brood pond. Yeah, these are Murray cod brood ponds. So we, we put the mature Murray cod male, female in there. So we place nesting boxes in the, in the ponds, virtually resembling a hollow log. So the fish will go in there and lay their eggs and we collect the eggs out of there. Because there's virtually no physical contact with the fish, we don't do any damage. They spawn naturally and yep. the fertilisation rates are much better. Okay, so the, the, the female gets in this nesting box, yep. thinking it's a log, lays her eggs on the bottom of it, the males come in, spread fertilisers, and then how do you get them from here into your hatchery? What we do, we check the nesting boxes um, at the right times of year, around that November period, three times a week. We collect the eggs. Eggs are laid onto a gauze inside the, the box. So we collect the egg off the gauze, just okay. this, this, this piece. Take it up so to the hatchery and incubate. It's like a flywire screen. They stick to the flywire screen and you just transport that into the hatchery. So we put them straight into water so they're not out in the sun or in the wind okay. and transport to the hatchery and incubate. Uh, mate, as you can see in here, <laughs> you, you've got a million cicadas going nuts here at the moment. Quite a few spectators, yeah. Yeah, the guys were in, were in late November, early December, yep. so the cod have just bred. Yep. You've collected the eggs. They're in the hatchery. Let's go and have a look at them. From the brood ponds that we just witnessed outside, um, we collect the eggs on the, this is the gauze that we took out from the, from the nesting box. Once the female goes into the box and lays the eggs, the males have about two minutes to fertilise the eggs, and that's it, she's all over. So we collect the eggs on the, on the gauze, cut them to a set size on a template, which gives us a, an estimation of the number of eggs. Um, we then put the eggs on, these, on the gauze into our incubators, these have a sloping bottom, so when the, when the larvae hatch, they'll drop to the bottom and flow out with the water, and we harvest on the outside. So as you can see, this is the incubation tub. With vigorous aeration and, and uh, water flow, the plumbing's set up so that as the fish harvest in the corner, they lift out and drain it there. We don't have to touch anything, all, all through gravity. Once the larvae are collected into here, into the baskets, we take them from there into the larval rearing room um, under fairly strict conditions. So Steve, obviously a quarantine area. You don't want any bugs or diseases to get in to uh, affect the growth of the native fish. This is the one point that um, can impact our whole production if we have problems in here, so we keep it clean. Steve, from the incubation room, the little Murray Cod Fry come into here. What's this room? This is a larval rearing room where we hold the fish until they're ready to feed. Yep. They'll, they'll live on their own yolk sac for about 10 days. By the time they finish the 10 days, they've developed their bottom jaw and attack okay. And they're ready to feed. So we produce live feed and feed them on live feed. Right, okay. And obviously, because you're harvesting the eggs over a three to four week period, there's various stages of uh, advancement yeah, of the correct, fry yeah. down, these, down these tanks. Yeah. Here, you were saying they've just, just come in a day ago. Yes. So they were very small. Here, they're maybe about a week old, I think. And then in the tank up there, they're ready to go into the, uh, into the growing pond. So you actually harvest them here after about how long? Normally about eight to ten days um, okay. after, they've, after they've hatched, but these ones are held back a little bit now because we've got a beautiful problem that all our ponds are full. So okay. we're, we're, it's a perfect fish. problem to have. Yeah. So hopefully you're progressing towards that half a million uh, Murray cod for this year. That's the aim. Cool. So when they leave here, they're maybe what? Two mil long, five mil long? Yeah, so they're about four or five mil long now. Four so. or five mil, and then they go into the ponds outside, yep. and then you grow them to... To about that 50 mil mark, 40 to 50 okay. mil. Okay, and then from there, harvest them, okay. and they go out into the lakes and rivers throughout Victoria. Victoria. Yeah, Let's go have a look in the pond. Thank you. Steve, your cicada activity has got anything to do with fish activity. We're going to have a cracker of an <laughs> afternoon out in the lake. Now, what have we got here? This is your plankton pond, which is where all the... Uh, all the Murray Cod larvae, all the... the um, fryer in here. Uh, the, these are where they're grown until about 50 mil. Yep. So these are about halfway through their, their okay. time. So another couple. Of so once they get into this pond, which is a pretty big pond, yep. they're just feeding naturally. Yeah. And you're trying to grow them from around about the six mil mark through to about 60 millimeters. 50, mil, yeah, 50, 50 mil to 60. Five, 60. So what do you got here, Steve? 
It's a little sample in it for some of our Murray I'll just see if we've got some oh, coming on. Some, yeah. There might be a few fish in there. So obviously got an aerator there which just gets the oxygen level yeah. up in the pond. 24 hours a day aerated. Okay. It's also for the, yeah, the mixing of the water as well. Yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Quite I can see in some there. in there. That's cool. Little Murray Cod. There you go. They'd be probably close to 40 mil. 40? 30, okay. So they're about... 80% of the way there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. in time-wise it's about probably 50%, so another okay. three weeks I'll be out, I'd say. Okay, so you harvest them in another three weeks and then stock them into the lakes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and how many would be in this pond? Uh, 75,000. 75,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's what went uh. in, so hopefully that, close to that comes back out. Oh, okay, so the what's the return rate? It, it's really variable. Um, okay. It can be from zero to 100%, and in all honesty, we're, we try and aim for about 80%. Yeah, really okay, excellent. Well, there you have it, Murray Cod. <laughs> I think we'd better get out of the lake and see if we can catch ourselves a larger cousin of one of these. So yesterday we casted a, a couple of snags that had fallen into the water. What we're doing this morning is drifting down a bank, using the wind to push us along. And we're just gonna pro prospect just all the way along. And whilst yesterday we cast a bit at visible timber on the bank, there's timber along, there's, there's all of these rocky all walls. all the way along here, yeah. And I suspect a lot of fish that come from this bank drifting are coming off good structure that we never see. Yeah. You might come back at the end of summer and, and it's dropped 20% and you'll, you can have a good look at yeah. some of these banks and you'll see the timber. And, yeah. and I suspect it's a lot of fish are coming off those. Yeah. You can see where we're going to drift down here. That's so it's speculating, nice a, lot of country. speculating a bit, but you're speculating with a bit of strategy in mind too. Yeah. Now Mark, I know Eildon's got a small natural population of Murray Cod, so how do you tell what works the best, your stockings or natural recruitment? We mark the fish bill, we put them in a, in a bark of food dye, it's called calcine, and it leaves a mark on the ear bone. So we're going to take some samples of some cod that are about the size we think would be from our stocking ears, yep. and we're going to see what percentage of those fish have the mark. I reckon it'll be 90 or higher. I suspect you're right, uh, but this will give us the definitive answer because it's really everyone's best guess. But it's fair to say that before we got really serious about stocking Eildon, yeah. it wasn't the cod fishery that it is today. A couple of big submerged logs. Yeah. And at this water level, it will be ideal for floating hard bodies. So you're not going to fish a spinnerbait? I'm not fishing a spinnerbait or a lipless bill. I know there are fish here, I know there's exceptional habitat, and a floating hard body gives me the reversibility. I okay. can stop winding and I can back out of snags, yeah. whereas I'm, I'm much more committed with the sinking lures. Mate, I'll sit back here and let's see what you can do. All right. Murray Cod just love timber, so we're going to put in 10 minutes here and see if we can't seduce one out from the depths. We certainly started that million Murray Cod yeah. stocking program at a really fortunate time after the 2010 rains and the lake filled and the productivity in the shallows and then we put in 333,000 cod plus the 50 we normally put in. The timing couldn't have been better. Yep, yep, on. Got him, good one. I think it's a green fish. It's a nice one. Perfect. 
Oh, keep him yeah, out of that yeah. shrubbery. So, all, of, all of 60, mate. Good he'd, on you. He'd have to be at least 60, wouldn't Absolutely. he? Absolutely. Now, I'd say he's not one of your minion fish. He's probably no. a little bit too advanced for that, yeah, but you've been stocking Murray Cod here for about 10 years in here. Oh, look, at least. So, even before the million yeah. started, I think we'd put in yeah, close to 900,000 anyway. That's right. So, Around about 50, 60,000 a year. So, there you go. That's yeah. what the fuss is about. Beautiful Murray Cod. That's awesome, mate. Clear water, snag. So he's about 67, I think, Phil. Sure. Yeah, he's up there, 67, just under 70. Yeah. Nice, nice fish. Maybe As a manager here for Lake Eildon, fisheries manager, you've yes. got to be happy with that. Look, this is what we're aiming to create. Spending licence money, stocking fish, yeah. growing cod like that, so anglers, families, children. And a lot of people, if they don't realise, a great majority of the population here in Lake Eildon is stocked. I'd say that's probably two seasons outside of the million. And of course, the million, you were doing 300,000 a year. 333,000 a year. Plus the 50 we'd normally put in. Yeah, that's right. So this would be one of those 50 from probably 208, 209. So, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Who knows? And true to your form, mate. Well, once you Exactly know, what you said happened. Once you know where they live, yeah. and you have a bit of success with those sort of strategies, Absolutely. Then these fish are within anyone's yeah. grasp. Well, we've got a few photos, Bill, and I think it's time to let him go. Yeah. Here he goes. Again, lures in Eildon. If it's purple, <laughs> it's probably right. <laughs> Good one. Uh, probably right. Mate, thank you very much. Been a pleasure. The man who not only catches the fish, you also stock them in the lake. I certainly help. And, uh, and help promote it to anglers so everyone can come and do what we've done. Absolutely. Well, yesterday we saw Steve Vidler. We saw how, they, how you breed the fish there, how you breed the cod. And today, how to catch them. Thanks again. Pleasure, Bill. Dogtooth tuna are renowned as being one of the toughest fighting fish on the planet. The AFN team hook up with the Nomad operation and troll for these hard-to-catch predators. Go. All go, Billy. All go. All Short go. corner. Short corner. He's one of the 90 cent blazers. Out with, out here with Nick and the boys, trawling along. Had a fairly long, long trawl that landed down one of the edges of the reefs. Out at about 40, 50 metres of water, six to nine knots. Really good trolling speed for these scent blazers, skirted lures. It's a nice bubble trail happening. Just either side of the wash of the motor and tracks the predators to that noise of the engine and then hopefully they look around and see a nice coloured skirt. A bit of smell emanating out of it. A bit of flash, a bit of... Well, we had a couple of hits before. We had one pulled out of the rigger. It's good when you, you know, like, it doesn't matter where you troll, whether you're in the, the tropics, further south. Troll to a plan. We got out this morning with, with Nick and the other guides and Nomad, and we didn't just come out here and just blindly pull lures through the ocean. We sat and looked at the formation of the reef, which way we think the current's going to be working. We're coming out and trying to hit those, those key pressure point areas where, where bait and predators might be holding up. You want to go through the gate? Fish. Get in there. <laughs> well done, Billy. Good fish. Lovely. Just put him down there. Get in there, Billy. All right. We're going to try so and do. So what's the story with this, Nick? Quickly out and yeah, in the water. That's it. Hey. They have got an air bladder that what they size? inflate. What size? So I'd say he's around that sort of 20, 22 kilos. Away. Along this edge, it'll drop from the shallows in about 40 to 50 metres, and then with prevailing currents, that current working along that edge produces pressure points and eddies, and it's those, those areas which we're really trying to target at the moment because they become prime points for bait to hold and then the predators. So with a little bit of strategy, 
not just getting out there and trolling, hoping for the best. You can find that you're, you're putting lures into the prime spots more often than not. And any given day, it's worth using your eyes and your sander because they then tell you how their plan needs to change. To see things like birds working on bait, to see current lines, show you bits on your sander where you're getting a temperature change or where bait might be holding a little bit deeper. Have a plan, but don't be afraid to change it based on what your eyes are telling you. Because the oceans will change day to day. Make the most of it when you're out there, put lures in the right spot, and hopefully hear drags screaming away at you before long. There he goes. 12 inch scent blazer sitting in the short corner. It's just been belted again. It's been a bit of a favourite this morning. Had a couple of near hits, and Bill's converted a doggy on it. And shows the flexibility of these lures. It's, it's one that we've chosen not to load with scent. Sounds kind of funny, but that is the beauty of the scent blazer range. They are flexible. You can do pretty much anything with them. And they are designed to put scent within them just to attract fish to bite more. But there's a very big problem with sharks in this area. And we've chosen on a couple of these lures not to scent them because we have donated a few to sharks in the background, which makes them a very, very versatile lure. It's going to adapt to just about any condition you're going to have trolling south or north. Definitely worth considering putting in your box. Oh, I've got colour. Lovely. Thank you, Nick. You right. just uh, see the teeth on the hose, don't I? Uh, chewers. I've cracked the code, mate. I travel a long way to catch a doggy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, that's, uh, that's my first one. I play with all the, the, you know, you and I live on the Sunshine Coast. We play with Spanish mackerel and all the sorts of down there, but we don't get to play with these guys. So yeah. there you go, mate. He's fallen for the, the 12 inch scent blazer skirt. I said before I took the scent out of it so he didn't get sharks instead. And well done, mate. You've, uh, you've, you've had a bit of a strategy today <laughs> that's starting to pay off. Beautiful. Mark, the crews through all these tuna popping up around the place. And the rig has just been total. First bit of chaos when you're trolling, full spread out. It's a bit of team play comes into it. Get them all out of the water. Let someone play a fish without the hindrance of other lines getting crossed over and wreaking havoc. Hey, you're on, mate. This is what we came to the coral sea for, Mark. Beautiful. Yeah, I've got some colour, Nick. I'm thinking it might be yellow fin. It's the beauty of using your eyes. We're focusing on some coral edges. And then we've seen all the birds going. And Nick's just guided that boat, not to go right through them, just to, to pull around the edge of the, the birds and the, and the fish working on surface to get those skirts, just coming around the fringe areas of the fish. And it's paid off. Now we're gonna have a bit of a shark problem here because they're waiting for us. You good, Nick? Good work. Beautiful, nine and a half inch scent blazer has done the damage. There you go, mate. Got the arms working over. That's what we came to the coral sea for. Get stretched. <laughs> exactly.